super middleweight bout. Levon Easley, who we have seen against upper tier competition, takes on the well-traveled Shannon Miller. And here is Easley. He is now 31 years old, fights out of New York, 5'10", 168 and a quarter pounds. He's now 16-9-2 with eight knockouts. And on a night featuring Olympians, we have a familiar Olympic name, Shannon Miller, but this Shannon Miller is not to be confused with the seven-time medal-winning gymnast. In fact, if you look at his record, you will notice that this Shannon Miller has taken many more spills and bad landings than the other. The Mississippi native has been knocked out 10 times with an 18, 27, and seven record. Dick Flaherty is the referee, six rounder. In the dressing room and a good professional fight. We're going six rounds, okay? Okay, touch him up, guys. Well, Teddy Atlas uh, easily has nine losses on his record, but let's run through a couple of those since 98. He's lost to Vinny Paz. He's lost to Eric Harding. He has two losses to Scotty Pemberton. So respectable marks to have against you somewhere. Yeah, you know, former world champion. Easily is coming in and having lost four of his last six. But as you alluded to, to good fighters. Miller, of course, is coming in having lost his last three fights. So the way it's starting, it may be his last four fights. Easily, I will say it now before it goes any further. He can punch. Boy, they're trading early here. Easily is the one, though, that has the bang in his gloves. Or at least attempting to trade early here. Easily lunging in with a right hand and misses with a left. Miller's coming in the lightest weight he's been in three and a half years. He's 12 pounds lighter than he was in his last fight only three months ago. So either Miller's in tremendous shape or he hasn't been eating right or he's overtrained. The stronger guy looks like right now as far as power is easily. And physicality, you'll look at easily. He looks to be the stronger man. Right now, easily a little over anxious. Just got to settle down a little bit and set up those big shots with the jab. Friday night fights from Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncasville, Connecticut. So glad you're with us. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas, Brian Gloria, Juan Kebas still to come in our main event. You're taking a look here at super middleweights, LeVon Easley and Shannon Miller. Easily is coming off of a first round knockout win. That was against Ross the Boss Thompson, who has been lingering and fighting folks in the 170 range, Teddy. That's well above when he was in his prime. Yes, it is. You can see Easily a little over anxious. He's been in with so many good fighters. He sees a guy in front of him, 18 and 27, with seven draws, and he says, okay. And he's, he starts licking his chops, but he's got to control himself just a little bit. He has the power, but he has to set it up with the jab. That was obvious when he came out of the corner, swinging away. And I'm sure that Easley's going to be told that when he gets back in the corner with it by his trainer, Junior Jones, the former bantamweight champion of the world, who's now embarking on a second career. And we wish him much luck, Junior Jones. Jab effective here in the last minute of that first round. If Beasley's going to get that knockout that he so desperately seems to be looking for, he's going to have to use that jab to set it up, shorten those punches up a little bit, and maybe throw some of them downstairs. Hi, we're the Robin. Oh, now. Sliding in the bottom right hand corner and you're gonna see the beginning of the last round easy we talked about him being over anxious well started right from the belt comes out instead of touching gloves he looks to land the big one right away loading up bombing away he Over needs there. to settle down Dick Flaherty with a timeout here to time okay. Fuck. deal with that but that's reminiscent of what happened at nearby Foxwoods this about almost a year ago with Angel Torres against Gabriel Crazan. As Torres came out, instead of touching him up, 
Protect yourself at all times. He was letting them fly. Punches in round number one. Seven to six edge for Easley. Lunging forward with wide shots is Shannon Miller. If Easley is going to have to be alert from the defensive end, it's going to have to be not stepping back when he sees that his opponent likes to throw the variety of punches that are wide and long. You pull straight back. Instead of pulling away from the punch, you're at the wrong distance. You'll pull into the punch. Those wide punches, you're better off stepping inside them or if you're going to step back, make sure you're at the right distance. You step back from a little too close, you're going to taste leather. Do your opponent quite a favor. It's good to be able to figure out your opponent and see what kind of punches he throws. You see he throws those kind of long punches, you know right away. I have to be at the right distance. I can't step back. Not from too close. Both these fighters loading up, not using the jab a lot, not putting punches together, definitely not throwing short punches. So what does that mean? Anybody who throws the correct punches, like you just saw Miller, jabs, straight punches, they're going to have some success. Anybody whose technique is a little bit more proper, a little bit tighter, they're going to be able to carry the round and be productive. That straight line theory worked for Shannon Miller moments ago and then easily returned fire. Back to the jab. Lead right hand from Miller. We talked about Easley haven't been in with good fighters. Miller has been in with some good fighters. That's part of the reason why he has a terrible record. But he has been in with good fighters. Tarvis Sims, Robert Allen, Sid Vanderpool, Chad Dawson, a prospect from right here in Connecticut, and Zab's older brother, Daniel, all own wins over Shannon Miller. Not a lot to separate each fight as far as the judges go. Always a good crowd here at Mohegan Sun for Friday night fights. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas, so glad you can be with us. Brian Valoria is coming up in our main event, the Hawaiian Punch. Very impressive last summer in his first round knockout of Luis Doria. He'll be taking on Juan Cabas. This is a six round super middleweight bout. Round number three, Levon Easley in the blue and white against the well-traveled veteran Shannon Miller in the black trunk. See the punches in round number two, easily a nine-six edge. The jab is always a punch that you hear trainers talk about. You hear boxing fans talk about the importance of it. That is underlined in this fight. Whoever uses their jab, that simple fundamental punch more, will probably carry the rounds, win the fight. Just now, the position that Miller's in has been set up because of the jab that easily used to get this close. Some clubbing right hands trying to come over the top as Miller holding, is holding. tying up on the inside. Been a lot of clubbing rights and lefts in this fight so far. Both fighters not afraid on, to use the variety. Next time I take a point, okay? The wide go, variety right? of punches. Okay, let's go. See a warning by the referee. Dick Flaherty handing out the warning to Shannon Miller. Next time, it'll come off the scorecard if that head comes in. Both these fighters throw straight punches as though they're paying for them. And they have a low budget. There's a reason why Easley may be over-anxious. He's had a lot of inactivity in his, recently in his career. One fight in 2001, one fight 2002, and then he stepped up. For him, he was... For that, he was very active. He had three fights in 2003. So that may be part of why he's all anxious. Hasn't been in the ring enough. Isn't comfortable. He's not calm enough. Right hand, wide again. Right Trying to score, up. easily coming in strongly there. Very once few, again, not behind the jab, Teddy. Very few clean punches being landed in this fight. The reason? Wide punches, easier to see, easy to block, easy to pick off. Hey. 
very low connect percentages according to CompuBox for both fighters, as you alluded to, Teddy. In this round alone, both fighters lingering around 15% landed. Short punches would serve either one of these fighters very well. Easily and Miller just about halfway through their scheduled six-rounder. Well, sliding in the bottom right-hand corner, Easley's been knocked out five times. Miller's been knocked out ten times. This is why, so far, there's no knockdown or knockout. Wide punches like that, you're not going to land. Round number four between these super middleweights. Easley coming off of a first-round knockout win against Ross Thompson. For Shannon Miller, he has lost three straight. Well, here's been one of the stories tonight. The jabs through round three, you see the numbers there. For Miller, he's landing two in the first round, one in the second round, one in the third round. All you need to do tonight to follow the fighters, look at the punch stats. The compute box can be very helpful as a guy tonight. Whoever's jabbing more, he's probably winning the round, if he's jabbing at all. Teddy Ellis's scorecard, 30 to 28 easily. Well, it seems that the pace has slowed here in round number four. Again, whoever uses the jab, and right there was easily, it's gonna set up even wide shots. It's gonna make the opponent defensive, as you can see he's making Miller, and it's gonna get him into distance to at least carry the fight. Miller gives you a lot of opportunities to work if you just use that jab. Watch easily when he uses that jab, Joe. Miller will cooperate by covering up, putting the earmuffs on right there. He gives himself now, makes himself a target, if Easley would just then go to work off that jab, which he's not doing enough of. Yeah, he's got to pay it off, and he's got to commit to doing it. Well, the old-time trainers would say, you know, the, the jab will set up the table, but then you got to go sit down and eat. Right now, Easley, when he does set up the table, he's not eating. Right, guy, let him out. Ahead. Again, watch Miller. Anytime something comes up, he'll put those earmuffs on like that. He'll cover up. And he'll give you target. He'll give you space to throw at. He'll give you the body. You just have to step in, put the punches together. Easily jumps in, smothers himself, and now he can't get his hands off. After this fight, Easley's people, I'm sure Junior Jones, the former world champion, is going to work with him on using the jab, on being a little bit more patient, on settling down and working off that jab. Easily the more active fighter, no matter how you look at it. Friday night fights from Uncasville, Connecticut at Mohegan Sun, Joe Tessitore, and Teddy Atlas with you. Round number five, Levon Easley and Shannon Miller. There has not been a round where either fighter has been able to exceed 10 punches landed. You see the punches through round four right in front of you. Very low percentages. The pace slowed in that fourth round. There have been opportunities for Levon Easley, but at times he's been hesitant, and as you've alluded to, Teddy, he would serve himself a lot better if he was more consistent coming forward with the jab. And that's the punch that's probably maybe the only punch that has landed Cleanly, and that's why I have my head at least on my scorecard. When he's thrown the jab, he's been able to land it. Simple reason, it's a straight punch. And when it's not landing, it's making Miller do what you would think you'd want him to do. It's making him go defensive, put the earmuffs on, cover up, and giving you an opportunity then to go and ply your trade, go to work. Problem is easily, after he gets Miller to cover up with the jab, he either steps out or he lunges in. He doesn't come in under control. When he lunges in like that, he gets too close. And as you can see, you don't need me to tell you now, easily smothered himself. On, Carrying the rounds is easy, though, with the jab and just moving his hands. Nothing great here, obviously, or an understatement, but 
him moving his hands, he's doing more than Miller. Miller looking to fight in spots. Hot shot. One shot at a time. And otherwise, making sure that he covers up and doesn't get caught anything big. Miller can't win the fight that way. Miller's, Miller's not the kind of puncher that I don't think, fighting the way he's fighting, can pull the fight out with one punch. Again, Miller does what you want him to do. He covers up. Easily not doing what his corner and any boxing person would want him to do. Not keeping the right distance, not under control when he comes in, and he's smothering himself. He's either under, out of control technically, or maybe mentally. Maybe he wants to smother himself. Maybe he's glad just to have the edge and have the other guy defensive, and he's not confident enough right now, maybe in himself, having lost four of his last six fights, to keep the distance where he can keep working. A lot of funny things go on in a fighter's mind in that ring, in that squared circle. Easily could be smothering himself on purpose. So he can just get a free ride. He's ahead in the fight, get inside, not have to work, know the other guy's not gonna work. Sort of make like a silent agreement. The good news is there's about 12 seconds left in this round, Joe, just in case you want to count. And the bad news, Teddy, is that there's one more song on this dance card between these two. Round six coming up. The sixth and final round between Levon Easley and Shannon Miller. It has been preceded by an insipid five rounds. What was that word there? Insipid. Well, well, that's Basically, the most whatever, impressive. Whatever you'd like. That is the most <laughs> impressive thing that I have seen. Sorry about that, Teddy. I'll tonight. stick that back in the holster. That, that is impressive. No, no, take it out. Bring something else. <laughs> Don't hold anything back at this moment. Once again, he's the opportunities to work, but getting smothered. That time, not his fault. Miller coming in and grabbing. Miller falling in. There's two portals of opportunity for easily offensively. One is to use the jab and just get Miller to come up. We've been saying it all night and then go to work. The other is to stand outside, faint a little bit, get Miller to jump in, because when Miller does come in, it's wide, and then punch in between those wide shots. He could score a knockout or a knockdown that way. Right now, Miller not cooperating, just in the defensive mode. Survival for Shannon Miller. He has a, a pro career that dates back to 1996. He's well-traveled. He's also very familiar with losing 27 losses on the record many to guys on the way up guys who have leveled off and some big name opponents there's the grabbing again both guys happy to accommodate each other who wouldn't mind if i changed the subject from the participants just for please, a second and please could you i'm just going to yes, take please. for granted or assume that the fans at home wouldn't mind usually i don't talk about a ring announcer but I think tonight might be a good time. Joseph Antonacci, our ring announcer, does a good job as a ring announcer in the ring, but does an even better job than what he does, what I'm going to talk about charity-wise. He gives 100% of his fee each time he works to benefit Gerald McClellan, a former world middleweight champion. He gives it to his trust fund. Of course, McClellan, all the boxing people out there, tremendous warrior. He was severely hurt in the title bout versus Nigel Benn back in February 2nd of 1995. He needs 24-hour care. It's about $70,000 a year. His family depends solely on donations to the Gerald McClellan Fund, Trust Fund, which can be found on the Internet. Any people that want to help with that, of course, would be greatly appreciated. But we appreciate Joseph Antonucci, Antonucci as the ring announcer and as his charity work, giving all of his fee to that great course. Wonderful example for everybody. Well, the crowd here at Mohegan Sun that has grown up watching great action fights in the Northeast. This was the home to Daddy Ward 1. Does not like what they have seen between Levon Easley and Shannon Miller. We have Brian Valoria coming up at our main event against Juan Cabas. But before we get to Valoria, we will get the scores of this fight. Stay with us. 
own the Golden Globe winner for Best Comedy of the Year. As I walk through. Nominated for four Academy Awards, including Best Actor, Best Director, and Best Picture. Lost in Translation. See it in theaters and own the DVD now. Your boxing authority. Plus, joining Brian Kenny next week in studio is the middleweight champion of the world, the executioner, Bernard Hopkins. You know he always has something to say. The total punches between Easley and Miller. You got a look there, and here's a look at Teddy Atlas's scorecard. 60 to 55, Easley. For the official word, we head up to the ring to Joe Antonacci. Boxing fans, after six rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards where Judge Donald Trella, Judge Frank Lombardi, and Judge George Smith all scored about 60 to 54 for the winner by unanimous decision, Levon Easley. So Easley moves on to 17-9-2 in his career.